we're nervous. I am not used to wearing lashes like this. This is an experience for me. I, I, so for a while, I was definitely a, I don't really need lashes. I just need to find a good mascara. Even though I knew my lashes were challenged, I still decided all I needed was just a really good mascara. And I found one and we'll be discussing that in the video. And then I kept getting comments from people, you know, if you just put on lashes, you know, if you just add lashes. And initially I was very defensive. I kept going like, why do I need to wear lashes to fit into it? I'm like, I did this work. Why was this not enough? Why do I need to put this, this hair on my, you know, eyes? And I've worn lashes before and I've seen the difference. Um, and then <sighs> something switched and I was like, okay, let's do it. And I put these on and these are huge to me. These seem like these aren't really drag lashes. I'm aware of that. These are these are nobody's 301s, but these are a lot. But I'm also kind of feeling what they're giving me. I don't know. They seem like a bit much. You can let me know in the comments. You can rip me to shreds if you'd like. I I'm kind of feeling them. All right. So, I decided to do in 2021 a review of my favorite products of 2020. I know. Um, I don't, I was waiting for my lighting and life and everything else. I mean, 2020, it's, it's kind of, kind of a dead horse at this point of what's going on in the world. Miss Rona is still making the rounds. People's lives have been incredibly changed for forever. You know, yada, yada, bing, bang, woo, woo. We know those things. We also have whatever personal issues are affecting us. But nonetheless, I'm here with some of my favorites. These are the products that I loved in 2020. Um, they may not have been released in 2020, but they are products that I found myself reaching toward. And I pretty much covered, I think, um, different categories. I'm sorry about the chair. She likes to sing just abruptly. I'm hoping that the microphone just kind of kills that a little bit. So please bear with me. But yeah, so without further ado, it might be a real YouTuber. Without further ado, like, let's get into it. So diving right in, I'm going to save eyeshadow for the end. Eyeshadow is kind of my addiction. This year I've been doing makeup two years now and eyeshadow became my obsession. And 2020 was the year of eyeshadow absolutely being my obsession. I spent way more money than I, um, way more money than I should without, like that goes without saying, but way more money than I'm comfortable admitting on eyeshadow. Um, it just, it just, it's one of those things where, especially within beauty spaces, it's, it's consumerism is just the thing. Like we all like to brag about what we've gotten and I didn't buy it to brag about it. But that attitude of just like mindless consumption, you know, even for someone who is aware of that, it, it can still seep in. And so you're just like, oh, you know, it's fine. And you think, you know, $20 here, $30 here, $60 here, you know, but that adds up. It absolutely adds up. I mean, my bank account has the proof that it adds up. But, um, you know, I'm enjoying the process. This is a means of expressing myself. I know, I know, I know, but let's get into it. All right. So I... I'm not really huge into face primer, so I don't have really any face primers here. There's kind of some leftovers of this coming together, and I will be discussing this look if you're interested. I'll have details down below of everything that I use to achieve this. So I don't really have any primers to recommend. I did use the uh, Milk Hydro Grip Primer that my mom was nice enough to buy for me. Um, and again, with masks, I really don't wear foundation on a daily basis. Uh, at this point, I'm just wearing foundation for Instagram photos and YouTube videos, stuff like that. Um, I've been getting into doing a little bit of concealing, but even before then, I was just doing my brows and eyeshadow. And at one point, I was just doing eyeshadow and letting my brows be damned. But, so I don't really have any primer recommendations, but I did use the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. For foundation, however, I do have some recommendations just based on color match and finish. Personally, I don't run into a lot of issues when it comes to foundations um, in terms of how it sits on the skin and all of that. Mama takes care of her skin. By no means am I saying my skin is perfect, but it definitely helps if you have a great base. Whatever foundation you put on it, it's pretty much going to play well. If you take care of your skin, 
the foundation will look much, much better because your skin looks much better. It'll be a lot smoother and all of those things. But I do have a couple of foundations that I really did enjoy. Um, the first being the NYX Born to Glow. This one is in the shade Deep Walnut. I also have it in Deep Rich. I think the color is nice. I like the finish of it. Even though it says Born to Glow, it's not super duper dewy, which is really nice. Um, I don't like like a greasy looking foundation. I have normal to dry skin and I definitely love a glow. As you can see, it's very subtle. I know it's kind of hard to notice that I'm wearing any highlighter. I know, I know, but definitely, um, and other people have talked about this, by no means am I trying to sit here and like act as if I'm introducing products to you that you've never heard before. Just some random asshole on the internet telling you about products that I like to kill away the sad feelings, like we're all doing. But yes, NYX Born to Glow in Deep Walnut. Uh, also having Deep Rich. I think the shade range is not bad from what I recalled. Um, there are several shades below me. Typically in a foundation, I'm the next to last or the third to last sometimes if it's the more expanded range, but usually next to last, um, if not the last, if the shade range is just entirely booty. So NYX Born to Glow. Next I have here the Milani Conceal and Perfect. Um, and by the way, I'm wearing the NYX Born to Glow foundation. I have the Milani Conceal and Perfect. Now I've always seen this at the drugstore and the store that I see it at, it never has a shade that is deep enough for me to wear. And the undertones always seemed a little iffy, but I decided to hop on Milani's website and I noticed that they had other shades and they had a shade that was better suited for me. So I picked it up and I found that I enjoyed it. I did see the review by Too Much Mouth and initially kind of put me off on it, but I know she has oily skin. So I, um, that might've been part of what affected that. For me, I haven't had any issues with this product. I like the finish of it. I think the color match is pretty good. When it comes to foundations, honestly, I'm, and this is a rare spot in my life, I'm pretty easily impressed, right? That is not the case for me in general in my life. But when it comes to foundations, I mean, is the color right? Does it look smooth? Okay, I'm fine. Like, I, I don't expect too, too much. I expect foundations are gonna wear throughout the day. I do get a little oily on my nose, so that can become a bit of an issue, but honestly, I'm not really losing sleep, like we're fine. So the Milani Conceal and Perfect, I like it. I do wish my shade was carried where I am, but I imagine the demographics of where I am play into that. So yeah, Milani Conceal and Perfect. I was using her quite a bit. This one I didn't really see a lot of reviews on, not that I am by any means an expert or that I have done deep dives into the reviews, but the Makeup Revolution foundations, I have the Conceal and Perfect, I think, or Conceal and Define, Conceal and Define, and then the Conceal and Hydrate. These foundations are full as fuck. Like they're not the most full coverage foundation I've ever used, but they're, they're I mean, they're close. The coverage with this, is phenomenal. The shade isn't the best. I am in F15. Oh, and in the Milani, I am in the shade um, Mahogany. One of my pet peeves is when people don't mention the shades, but I'm in the shade Mahogany. And, well, that fell. And then this is the Revolution Conceal and Hydrate Foundation. I am in the shade F15. I'm trying to find a girl. Oh girl, F15, I believe it's F15. I got this at Ulta. Yeah, this one has a pump. The other one, the Conceal and Define, at least the one that I have, I don't know if they've changed it since I purchased it. It is literally just kind of like a big doe foot that pulls out, it's like just a big concealer. But this one, I like it. I like the coverage of it. The undertone isn't red enough for me. Like I have a cool undertone, actually more of a pink undertone, but I'm fine with really red foundations to a point. This one isn't quite red enough, but I like it. So I'd recommend it. Again, in the shade F15, I like the coverage. Um, it's pretty nice. I love how it evens out the complexion. I do like it. Of the ones I've shown so far, the NYX Born to Glow, that's my favorite. And then this one, I just like because the color match is one of the best that I've ever had. And the packaging is just really cute. It is the ColourPop No Filter Foundation. This is in the shade 205. 
Um, it's just one of the best color matches that I've had. I haven't worn this foundation in a minute. I've been planning. It's like in the back of my mind, I'm gonna rebuy it, I'm gonna rebuy it. Um, it doesn't have the best wear time. So uh, there's that, but the color match is, and the finish, it looks beautiful. It really does live up to the whole no filter thing. Absolutely gorgeous. Again, ColourPop no filter foundation in the shade 205. Excuse me, definitely enjoyed that this year. So we have that. Another one, I guess an honorary mention was from The Ordinary, their serum foundations in the shade 3.2R. 3.2N, I guess in certain ways I was able to rock, but it's definitely that N, that neutral really is neutral. But the 3.2R, I like it. It is a serum foundation, so don't expect coverage. And I'm not a huge coverage person. Like I did a little more than normal, you know, which I, my normal really has been no foundation, but if I were wearing foundation, um, it's a lot more than normal, but it's because I'm filming and Instagram and you know the expectation that you gotta put a whole day on like cake on your face, girl. The whole damn tiramisu, the whole damn wedding cake. You gotta do it, pack it on. So it, it's a little more full coverage going on right now than normal. But the NYX Born to Glow, the Milani, the ColourPop, I like the Ordinary Foundation. Those are kind of the favorites that I've been working with. Moving on to concealers now. My no, well, let's 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 do let's build up to my girl. So let's start with the Elf 16 Hour Camo Concealer. This is in Rich Chocolate. My perfect one is in Rich Cocoa. Rich Cocoa is the perfect shade. I actually used it to find my brows, which have been, you know, covered up by the shadow, but the perfect color. This is Rich Chocolate. So the Rich Cocoa, it has the perfect pink undertone. Oh, sorry. The perfect pink undertone for me, just absolutely perfect. Perfection, honey. Absolutely love it, like, bar none. Just love the color match, it does last. This is definitely a concealer. This is in uh, rich chocolate. I did get a little brighter, then I also have deep cinnamon, which is better because it has more of that pink undertone and brighter, so it gives me that brightening effect. Um, these are also really great. I didn't put it in the eye primer category. These are great for eye primers. We'll get there, but just a little heads up. You know, if you are looking into like a drugstore option, if you're a concealer kind of person, something to look forward to. So that's one. You might have gotten a little preview of one of the others. Another concealer that I really liked this year was, if I can find her. I know, I don't really want to edit this, so please bear with me. The Milani Conceal and Perfect uh, Concealer. This is in the shade Cool Toffee. Um, she, even though she says Cool Toffee, she's a little orange, so I have to be careful with how I use her. The smell, the smell, absolutely just, girl. It reminds me, and I'm not really much of a drinker. I may have a drink once a year, if that. Alcohol is not really my jam, but I am a fan of a good um, Irish whiskey. I think it's called. Irish whiskey? No, not Irish whiskey. What is it? What am I thinking of? <sighs> Irish cream? Like like Bailey's and St. Vernon's or whatever the brands are. Like those kinds of drinks. I uh, And that's what this smells like. This smells like that. It's just that vanilla, but like kind of alcoholy, but not too bad. Love it. The coverage of this is nice. The, 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 it blends out beautifully. It sits well on the skin. Absolutely a fan. If you can find your color, um, they have more on their website. It sucks that you kind of have to go there, but again, depending on where you live, it's true of any product. Just something to keep in mind. Milani Conceal and Perfect. So her. We also have a little honorary mention. And by the way, I did try the hydrating concealers too. I do find I prefer the camo concealers, which are more matte. And honestly, they both kind of dry down the same way. Um, I think I just need to play with the hydrating one a little more. I just I just wasn't really wasn't impressed with the deep cinnamon hydrating elf camo concealer versus the or the hydrating one versus the 16 hour one. Prefer the more matte one. Probably isn't making any sense right now. But yes, basically, I prefer the matte one. 
Next one I'm gonna talk about is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh. This is kind of an honorary mention. I like it. It actually reminds me a lot of the one that is my favorite. I keep feeling like I've shown it and you might have picked it up, but very creamy. It 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 says it's creamy and it lives up to it. I think the only issue with this one is the coverage isn't the greatest, but I love the this is in um 20 a 180n dark 180n um looks a little warm on camera so it's not like the best match but like it's very creamy but the coverage isn't the best but in a jam i will use it my bay though like i've had issues with this company in terms of complexion products with the foundation because they all their products tend to run super warm hella orange they are serving you pumpkin spice year round it's just that's been my experience with the undertones with this company but the concealers oh my goodness juvia's place i am magic concealer this is in j8 i have j1 as well that i use to contour here's j1 there's j8 i also have j9 um, and j6 the, these are so the, the way they sit on the skin, so beautifully, so creamy. They, they eliminate, I don't say they eliminate texture, but they just lay on the skin so beautifully and they are pigmented. You do not want to apply too much of these concealers or it's going to be a mess. Like I've gotten into that when I use like J9 or even J8 if I put too much and I do the Jackie Ina thing of letting it sit for a little bit and then blending it out. If you put too much of this on, it, did you have on foundation? Were you wearing foundation? What even is foundation? Is that a thing anymore? It's all of it's gone, but I absolutely adore the Juvia's Place Eye Magic Concealers. Just beautiful. I am wearing them today as well. So the next Born to Glow, I'm wearing the Juvia's Place in J8, and then I did contour with J9, um, which you really can't see. I even did a reverse contour, you really can't see it. But, um, yeah, so those are that. So those are those concealers. Moving along, so we've done foundation, we've done concealer. Let's get into, let's get into highlighters. Let's talk about that. So normally when I do my makeup, I start off with my brows and my eyes, but I'm saving the eyeshadows for last because that's my heart. But getting into highlighters, love, again, in case you can't tell, I feel like I look kind of greasy on camera and I'm not really mad at it, um, but I love highlighting. I feel like there's just certain steps in your routine that you get to and it just, like you have that moment of like, she's here, they've arrived. Like they, they're in the moment, they are the moment. Like highlighting does that for me. Like I get to that point and it's just, it's there. Ooh, girl, it is there, honey, it is there. Love it, especially like highlighting here. Just, uh, the blush is a little heavy, so please forgive me for that. I am giving you Ronald McDonald realness right now. I'm giving you uh, clown school dropout, you know, but we'll deal. But um, yes, I am um, lo in love with highlighting. So first highlighter that I want to show you is the... Wet n Wild highlighters. If you are in the neighborhood and you are wanting a highlighter from the drugstore that looks gorgeous on the skin, that if you didn't know better, would you would assume is maybe a higher end highlighter. Wet n Wild has you covered and in a number of different forms. I've tried the little squares. Oh, I didn't bring one out. I thought, I thought I did. I did not. They have the little square ones. They have the loose powders. This one is jammed currently. Of course, it, it jams right when I want to film. But you can kind of see the color. This one is in, it's lit. Oh, yeah, I'm so lit is the name. I don't know if you can see that. But just sits beautifully on the skin. I actually use this today to set the base highlighter, which I'll mention there, but Wet n Wild highlighters, the liquid ones, the powder ones, they just, if you just want a drugstore option that performs beautifully, look into Wet n Wild, I'm telling you now. Again, this one, um, they do have a liquid one I didn't pull. They also have the little square ones. I'm 
up. Love it. Next one, e.l.f. released these highlighters and I haven't really heard anyone talk about them. They released these metallic flare highlighters and I have this one in white gold. For a moment, this was my favorite highlighter. Absolutely. We're going to swatch. I haven't done any swatches, but we're going to do a little bit of a swatch even on this hand. This is it here. Now, some people might be looking at that and going, ooh, girl, like she's a little, she's silver. She is silver. I mean, it's called white gold. I have a cool undertone, so I tend to prefer really silver highlighters, um, but just, just absolutely beautiful. She'll feel not really doing justice for it, but just, camera's not really picking up just how luminous it is, but really a fan of this highlighter. You do have to build her up a little bit, but I'm okay with that. Uh, this versus the other highlighter, the next one that I'm going to mention. This one's a buildable one. I do enjoy it. You know, it's from e.l.f. It's affordable. Um, I didn't really hear anyone talking about it. But the other one is the Makeup Revolution Highlighter Reloaded. Um, I have it in the shade Dare to Divulge. Again, works really well. It's a very silver highlighter. That one, less is more. If you go in there ham, again, just like the concealer comment, how the foundation will be gone, what even is a base, right? You just decided to wear highlighter that day. That was a choice that you made. You were gonna leave the house. I'm just wearing highlighter. I wanna be seen from any geographic point. That was your decision if you put on that highlighter. Very just like beaming. But if you do, because it does build up really quickly, it can emphasize texture and it could be a bit much, so there's something to keep in mind, but Makeup Revolution's Dare to Divulge. Don't have it with me right now. Didn't think about it, so I apologize. And then the last one, this is my favorite, and it's the only cream highlighter that I've ever used. Everyone has probably talked about this, but I was introduced to it this year. It is the ColourPop Super Shock Highlighter in Flexitarian. Um, I am very much so a fan of this highlighter. It's like kind of champagne-y, you know, so it has a little bit of that pink to it, but it's still silver. It's incredibly creamy. A little goes a long way. Absolutely, a little goes a long, look, look at that. It is more on the silver side, so if you don't like really cool tone highlighters, it may not be for you. Um, I definitely want to play around with more pinky ones or rose goldy ones. True gold ones, like I have some in a palette that I'm going to mention that I just don't use, even though the formula is nice because they're just too warm. But just the ColourPop Super Shock Highlighter. Nice, foily. I actually use that as the base and then set it with the... Did I hear the elf? No, with the I'm So Lit from the Wet n Wild is what I used. But absolutely a fan. Love it, love it, love it. I know people have talked about it before, but again, I'm just discussing what has been a favorite for me. Uh, but yeah, ColourPop Super Shock Highlighter in, or Super Shock Cheek in Flexitarian. Moving on, I think we're going to talk about liner. No, we'll do liners later. So I think we should do liners. Let's actually skip that. Let's talk about eye primers. So we're going to get into the kind of the good parts. So I've been looking for, or was for a while, really good eye primers. When I first started off, I was using um, Wet n Wild's Photo Focus Primer. I remember at the time thinking, oh my God, it was so good. And now I'm gonna look back. That's the thing with any journey when you're doing something, you start it off and you have those like little accomplishments or things that you do well that you really like. And then at some point as time progresses, you learn and grow and you kind of get to a point where you're like, I liked that. That was that was a thing that I enjoyed at one point in time. Okay. Um, it, 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 in retrospect, I mean, it wasn't terrible, but I, again, just starting off the wet and wild photo focus, you know? And then I went on to Elf's primer, which again, isn't bad. Milani's primer, which I did like, but all of those I think are better if you have a lighter skin tone. If you want to wear really bright looks like this and you have a rich, deep skin tone like myself, you're going to need a, a base that, or really a base, something that has pigment to it that the colors can sit on top of and show better. A lot of people use concealer to accomplish that, but there are eye bases 
I have a couple here, not really a ton. There's one that I really enjoyed that they've discontinued. I found that out and it's the, or not really enjoyed. It was fine. Um, it was the Revolution Pro Eye Elements Primer. I got this one because I want it. Initially, for a while, I was like, I'm not getting the P. Louise base. I think it's overrated. And I still think it's overrated now as someone who has it. Um, but it's like, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. Something in me, the slight contrarian streak, just, I was like, no, mm -mm, I'm good. And then I finally got it. And I saw what people liked about it. Don't get me wrong. P. Louise base does work. But it's not something you can't replicate elsewhere, right? I can still get the same degree of pigment with the e.l.f. 16-hour camo concealer. I can get the same thing with the other ones that I'm going to show you. This one, again, the Revolution Pro Eye Elements. Some people have said it is a dupe for the MAC Paint Pot. This is in the color core right there. Very creamy. Colors pop on it, like beautiful. I remember the first time I got into those kinds of bases, like the P. Louise and this one, and you could see the difference, you know, and I was like, oh, again, those concealers work in terms of the pigmentation, but I remember the eyeshadows just having this like watercolor kind of just like, just, uh, just absolutely phenomenal. Loved it. So there's that. Revolution Pro, you can't get this anymore, but it was a favorite of mine, so that's why I put it kind of at the bottom. It's not really a ranking, but you know, just kind of getting it out the way. And then I've also been using the e.l.f. concealers. I have it in white. This is a phenomenal one. Um, it's just a white concealer from there. What I like about this one, this is the only thing I have ever used that has not creased on me, right? As someone who has hooded eyes, I don't know if you can really tell much, but I deal with creasing with really anything. I can't even fault a lot of primers anymore. If I experience creasing, it's just kind of like, girl, it kind of comes to the territory at this point, girl. It's just, it's just, you're just going to creasing. So yeah, there is a lot with that, but this works. This is the only thing I've ever used that has never creased or maybe like once, but my eyeshadow looks exactly the same as it did when I left. Just great. What made me steer from this was just curiosity, and now I'm actually finding myself going back to this, this, and then using also deeper colors for more neutral looks, or just playing around. And then my number one primer is also from e.l.f. It is the e.l.f. Putty Primer. And this one I have here is in rose. I also have it in, um, I had it in cream, I think, which is more of a yellow base. And then I have the white one, which I didn't initially like this primer at first because, you know, except for Rose, oddly enough, but the white one and the cream one, they are like really rough and dry when you touch them and it just felt like it was really difficult to get anything out. And then I put them on the eye and it would be really patchy and I'm like, mind you, my experience wasn't like that with Rose. With Rose, she was creamy, beautiful. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I've hit pan on it. I do have another one but it, it is absolutely a putty texture. It's a lot drier, but one of the things I noticed with this is the pigmentation that you get using this. I used it today for this look, uh, for that the blue and the purple and that blend. I love the pigmentation that you get. I do still experience creasing, um, but again, I kind of almost always experience that, but I know on the packaging, I think it's like crease proof. I do get creasing with this primer, but it's not severe creasing. And for me, I always get it just in that fold on my eyes. So yeah, love this one. Again, it is in the shade Rose, kind of a pinky tone, good one. Okay, now we're gonna get into my favorite part. It's kind of like I rushed through things. Eyeshadow, we're gonna talk about eyeshadow. Love eyeshadow, I mentioned earlier, it's kind of an addiction for me. It's been a lot. I know this is all over the place, I'm kind of okay with that. I just want to put this out there. Probably not going to edit this. You're going to see me getting up several times and whatever other imperfections and probably just projectile talking, spitting, whatever. But in terms of my favorite eyeshadow palette, I love color. It isn't obvious. Um, my Instagram is down below and you can look at the looks that I've done. I am no stranger to color and so it should be no shock that a great deal of the palettes that I have here are all rainbow palettes. So the first one that I 
Uh, I wouldn't say I love this one, but I have it here because she is capable. And I've done some really nice looks with this one, but it's not my favorite. This is from the crayon case. This is the matte book that I got. And as you can see, she has been used um, mostly from swatching. That's one of the things I'll get into, but you know, she's very colorful here. I love this row. I love this. I kind of wish the James Charles palette, I have the mini of that. I kind of wish that palette, the neutrals in the middle were more like these, these more neutral or kind of like reddish ones here. I use this one as a contour quite a bit. It's nice and cool toned. The pigment is here. Um, you can create wonderful looks. I have a number of looks that I've created with this. The issue I have is this is not my favorite formula. It is a little powdery. You do kind of have to build these up to make them work. So I don't know if I'd repurchase this, but again, I'm including it because I did get some great looks. It's also black owned. It's from, uh, yeah, Crayon Case is a black owned brand it's by Supa. If you're familiar with Supa, I, I know from some of the videos she used to do back in the day, babe, about stories and all that, but yes. So, you know, MacBook, I have not seen a ton of reviews of this, but yeah. Um, Definitely a lot of pigment. I do wish that, um, maybe I'll do a full review. Let's not get too much into it, but yeah. So this is on the list. I like the colors. Um, the formula is not the greatest, but you can build it up and get some really nice looks out of it. So there's that one. Next on the list that I have here is the palette from Makeup Revolution. And again, one of the things I'm learning is my first impression is uh, something that I definitely should challenge more. It sounds obvious to say, but an experience, like actually doing that, you know? But it's the Makeup Revolution Patricia Bright collaboration. This is the rich in color one. There's one that's more neutral with some pops of color, and then this one, which is a rainbow palette. This palette I did not like initially. I had kind of a similar issue that I had with the... Um, I should swatch that. Maybe I will swatch that one. Um, same issue I kind of had with the matte book. This formula definitely is very powdery. And one of the issues I had with that one, this one not so much, was you kind of hit pan really early. I remember there was a review on the matte book about that one, but I just want to bring that up because it came to mind. But this one, as you can see, it's basically a rainbow palette. That red, it's not like the most fire engine red. It's definitely more of like a peachy kind of red, not my favorite, but I've done some really nice looks. I am definitely a fan of like the purple, the pink in here, this deep blue. I've yet to look, like, look at that. Absolutely fucking insane, right? And I would not have expected that. It swatches really well. Now the mattes in here, I do like. There's some more than others I don't. The shimmers in here, you can throw them out. They can, like, no, they can't come in. Oh, those are your guests. So do you want to leave with your guests? Do you want to come in? The shimmers can go. They can go. This one is the only one I like. It's like this creamy, it's like a cream shadow. Um, this is really pretty, just green sparkly color. But yeah, I've done some looks with this. I revisited this one because someone on Instagram used this palette to make a look. And I was like, oh, I really don't have the best experience. And they're like, oh, I love it. Retried it. And Honey, we've done some looks with her. I've thought about, I've liked it so much, I've thought about getting the Rich in Life palette with the more neutrals, even though I, how often do I do neutral looks? Let's go back to the matte book real quick and swatch that. Hopefully I'm not talking too fast. I'm kind of trying to be self-aware here. And just to give you an idea of the pigmentation that you can get with this palette, let's do this green, let's do the purple, let's do the depth of that dark brown. And look at this yellow. I do really, really like the yellows in this palette. So again, I don't know if you can see on camera, kind of powdery, you know, just even how it sits on camera, but they are pigmented. There's no, you know, there's pigmentation there. So I definitely can't complain about that. So that was the matte book and the Makeup Revolution. All right, so now we're getting into my, my fave thieves. Next one is... I guess we're gonna do them in that order. So I actually bought this one maybe a month or two ago. I got it during Black Friday, I think. And also, maybe not two months ago, well, whatever. Got it during Black Friday or the week of, and I've been wanting this one for a while. It is the Sample Beauty Painters palette. So within that short time, it's already made an impression on me. 
Um, I'm still deciding on it, but I've liked it enough to include it because the looks that I've done, I've liked. Um, I think it's a gorgeous color story. I mean, it just looks beautiful. It is very pigmented. One of the things that I like a lot about this palette, it is one of the few rainbow palettes that I own that has a true red like this and a true orange. So many palettes, and you'll see that with the next one, the oranges are like more cool tone peach or the reds are more of a berry than like a true red honey. They said we're giving that ass red. So very, very true to color. You know, I hope the vibrancy is kind of coming off on the camera. Just to, again, we're gonna swatch these. Let's get a little bit of prints. Look at that, just insane, absolutely insane. Now what I will say, caveat of this, not a fan of the shimmers in this palette. Again, just like the Makeup Revolution one, the shimmers can kick rocks, not really here for it. And watch this, I'm gonna swatch it, it's probably gonna look great. No, that's not terrible, but it, I'm not in love with it. I'm gonna show you a palette that has shimmers that I am in love with. So here's the swatches of those shades that I did. Yeah, so I do enjoy this palette. It does blend well. I do think it gives you a nice selection of mattes to play with, um, but I'm still, the jury's still kind of out. This black is not my favorite black. It works, but it's it's definitely not my favorite black that I've used, but everything else in here, the mattes wise, and also this baby pink here, um, bonbon, a bonbon, I'm not the biggest fan of, but, Color story, your typical rainbow palette that I just, consumerism went out, girl. Ooh, excuse me. I do love this though. I do love the packaging. I love the canvas feel of the front, the silver lettering, like she's cute. She's cute, the little message on the inside of it, you know. Again, I might do full reviews of these products at some point, show a look go through particular shades. If it's something you're interested in, if you feel like there's things that you wish I would have discussed more, let me know down in the comments below. So next, we're getting into the top tiers. Next would be the Beauty Bay Bright Matte. Again, another rainbow palette. Um, there. So we have here, this is the Beauty Bay Rainbow Palette. Very beautiful, very colorful. Um, definitely quite the fan of it. Uh, let's see, hold on. Hello, welcome back. So just had to grab a couple more that I, I missed. I was just doing mental inventory. I was like, girl. So Beauty Bay, Bright Matte Palette. I got this one, I saw it, I knew I didn't need it. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna get it, but I hadn't really tried any of Beauty Bay's products and I wasn't sure what I was going to get myself into. The images on the site for this are, are not very flattering, not very appetizing. They look cheap and I didn't really see a ton of reviews. Later some started to come up and I saw one that I was like, okay, we're going to try it. This is, if you are just in the neighborhood for a rainbow palette that's affordable, this is it. She is it. She delivers incredibly pigmented. like. If you're just someone who only cares about pigmentation, like there's there's no shortage of pigmentation. And also, if nothing else, this blue row and this purple row are everything. Abs like I wouldn't, I have, I love blue. I'm a blue hoe, love blue. I have a blue palette on the way. The blue row here, if they released that alone, I would probably rebuy. Like just absolutely crazy. The black in here is actually decent. Like I really like the pigmentation. Where I think they messed up is I wish there were more deeper shades for dimension. Um, so they give you this deep blue, you get a black and the purple's kind of deep, but why didn't we get like a burgundy here? You know, or a deeper green. I would have appreciated that. But otherwise, pigmentation girl galore. I do enjoy it. I don't use it a ton, ton as of late. I will say kind of like the matte book, the formula is more on the powdery side, but I feel like it performs better. So it is a little on the powdery side. There's that black, but I think it performs better than the matte book. Um, but yeah, it is kind of a more powdery formula. 
since we're talking about Beauty Bay, we're gonna talk about, which is probably one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes of 2020. It is the one that you see me wearing currently, and that is the Beauty Bay Book of Magic palette. It has seen better days. Some of this has kind of come off, but this, this palette, um, I didn't have, I didn't know what to really expect when I got it. I thought it'd be similar to the Beauty Bay Bright Matte. So it's like, okay, at least the pigmentation will be there, but what else can I expect? Oh my God. So I got this in Sunset Horizons. I decluttered the Sunset Horizons. I, not only did I get like a bad one, the mirror was like fun house kind of, it was distorting, but I just, I wasn't really wild with it. But this palette here, oh my God. Like, first of all, blue ho realness. I mean, everything you could kind of want with blues. Not everything, but a great deal of them. You get different undertones. You get more teal colors. You get more of kind of your typical blues. This is coming off really teal on camera. This is actually not so teal. I don't know why that color is reading so teal on camera right now, but it's really not. Um, this nice blue here, which is more closer to a true blue. This is deeper, like the colors look a lot brighter than they actually are, but love this palette. The pigmentation of the mattes, the shimmers, this set the standard. This in Juvia's Place, uh, I wanna say those two. This in Juvia's Place have set my expectations for shimmers. These shimmers are phenomenal. This one here, like the ones I think people will talk about is like crystal. Look at that. Oh my God. Look at that. I sound so dramatic. Like just look at that. That is insane. That's, that's crystal or spell. Sorry, that's spell. Crystal is a duochrome shade and you can kind of see the shift in it. It's like a brownie, greeny kind of color. You have Charmed, which I'm not as impressed with, that purple. And we also, but the star to me, even though these are the ones that probably people will talk about, this cream one, Stardust, oh my God. I don't really do neutrals like that, but it's creamy. Let's, let's swatch them. I don't know if this will do justice, but ugh, no, not really. That did not really show up. Let's do them again. Let's do them again, shall we? Well, thank you. I appreciate your patience. Thanks. Management. Okay, so let's look here. Spell. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. This purple one. That's a dual chromy crystal one. And then this is... Oh, see, I, that had black on it. Why did I use that one? So that one kind of distorted how Stardust looks, but um, there we go. That's Stardust. Oh my God, look how foily that is. I love a foily shadow. And look at this eyeshadow, right? The colors blended out really well. I'm wearing, this is all I'm wearing. Like I have here, I'm wearing uh, these two blues, these purples. I have this color. I have this shimmer, Stardust, on. I'm wearing this black. This is the deepest black. It doesn't look like it on camera. This is probably the deepest black that I own. But yeah, she's pigmented. And I love this look. I love how it came out. I think it's one of, I think it's just, it's nice. So there's that black there. So just, it's just a nice black. It delivers. I think they did a great job with the color story. They gave us dimension instead of just mid-tones. We got deep tones, right? If I wanted to do a blue look, right? You, if I want to start black and then go into a deeper blue and then go a little lighter, then I have two options and then I can blow it out with that. If I want to do purple, again, you get this color and this color and then this lavender shade. It's not really showing up lavender, but I guess the white balance isn't the greatest, but I'm filming on my camera or my phone. Love this, this is absolutely in probably my top three for eyeshadow palettes, 2020, hands down. Okay, let's get into these surprise ones. So BH Cosmetics released a number of palettes this year. I initially bought a palette with them um, back in 2019, I wanna say, 
call it the ultimate mattes, which was nice. It's more of a powdery formula, but it has the pigmentation. Powdery formulas tend to blend well, but they, they aren't like massively pigmented, the bright Beauty Bay Bright Mattes and the Crayon Case be exceptions. But um, yeah. So then I ended up buying the Weekend Festival palette and I'm glad it was just a weekend because I I was not feeling that palette. It's not the worst palette that I've ever used, but it's definitely just very like cheapy, almost kind of like, the glitters just are really gritty. They feel really cheap. The shimmers weren't anything to write home about. The mattes were okay. I was like, oh, maybe BH isn't as great as I thought. And then I watched this influencer, Angelica Nickvist, I've been watching her stuff. And she, she does different products. You know, she does complexion as well, but I watch her for the eyeshadows. And she was just swooned by the Sugar Shop release that they had last year. Um, just swoon, swore the formula was just so phenomenal, so amazing, oh my goodness. And so I initially, I was like, fine, whatever. I bit the bullet and I bought the cherry on top and the, I don't have the, uh, oh yes. I bought the cherry on top and the cotton candy palettes. And when I tell you for $18, these palettes, so I have five of them, right? These were so good that I actually went back and bought three of them. When I tell three more, when I tell you these palettes for the price point rival a lot of high-end shadows in terms of pigmentation, but with the star, the mattes are great, but the star are the shimmers. That's the other one I want to mention. Beauty Bay, Juvia's Place, depending on the palette, and BH with these, the shimmers in here are to die for like absolutely impeccable i think they did a great job with the packaging they're like stackable like they don't connect to each other but they're they're an image um they're scented which isn't something that i need in a palette but i'm not mad about but absolutely pigmented with these shimmers let me show you a different one like this is the cherry on top palette here it, I like it. It gives me that nice burgundy moment. I have two other palettes since we're talking about burgundy. Um, anyway, love this palette. Absolutely just the pigmentation is phenomenal. Phenomenal from BH. Like just, I wish you could see the foily nature of these shimmers. Like just super blinding, like blinding, foily, just goodness. So... Look at that. So these are the mattes from that palette. I think, oh, I put this on the thumb. I'm glad y'all rocked with me for 15 minutes, like 50 minutes, girl. Look at that, just absolutely insane. So I have five of them. This is the cherry on top, boom. I also got the cotton candy, and I'll probably be doing separate reviews. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I gotta do things based on how I feel at this point. Again, purples, I love purple. Love blue and purple. Again, if that, you know, if there's any inkling that that might be a thing. Um, I also got the other three. So I have the orange sorbet, which is kind of my least favorite of them. Um, I was hoping this would be more of a true red because even the red color on the cherry on top is more berry. But again, I mean, it's cherry, pinky. So this, we also have... I'm so excited for these. The pistachio palette, which is greens. Look at the attention to detail, even with the like, the um, rims, they're foiled. And so they just give that like pretty reflective thing. Just loving it. And then also the blues. Oh, so just, I'm excited to play around with these at some point. Super duper excited again. Look at that, kind of like Spell from the other palette. Um, did I get Sweet Tooth? I think it's the one that I got. Sweet Tooth, and then it was Blueberry. Just absolutely crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I think if I do it there. Let's see. Can't you tell I'm a professional? And I can't. Mint. This is still going up. Okay. 
So those were the BH palettes. A couple other recommendations. I enjoyed this as well. If you are someone who loves berries, I've been into those quite a bit lately, is the Juvia's Place Berries palettes from the six pans that they released. This is my favorite of the six pans that I've purchased. I have this one, the chocolates and the violets, and my like for them is in that order. Number one, number two, the chocolates and the violets. I've used like twice. Very disappointed in that one. But this one, just the pigmentation, the shimmers, like they nailed it. When I want a, a red wine, burgundy kind of look, this is one of the ones that I reach for. And then as well, Juvia's Place, black owned, they're popular. ColourPop. Now, the gag with this one is that I actually have owned two other ColourPop palettes that I found disappointing, the Blue Moon and the Just My Luck. The Just My Luck actually basically just fell apart. The shimmers were like the most delicate thing in the world. They kept crumbling and messing things up and coming out, eventually just shattering. I tried the alcohol trick a couple times, which normally works. Was not the case here for this one. Oh my goodness. But this one here, I don't know if it's a nine pan thing or what. I say all that with two more nine pans on the way. So clearly I learned my lessons. But this here, the ColourPop All That palette. Again, another burgundy dream. This one does not have the issues that I run into with the nine pans that I've used. These I don't feel like are as hard pressed so the pigmentation comes off. They blend beautifully. I love infatuation. It's like this weird mix of a glitter and a shimmer. It's like whatever formula they've used for this, it's so pretty, so pretty. It's really pretty. Kind of look how foily. I'm just a sucker for foily, foily, foily shimmers. But I really like this palette, plays well. I wish this was a matte black, but other than that, and the gag is when I bought this one, because I bought this in Just My Luck. This one was the one I was like, eh, probably never gonna use. And this one I like more than Just My Luck. So again, burgundy options. Now, my number one palette of 2020. I think I'm gonna round it off here. I did have a couple other options. Maybe I'll keep going, I don't know. But my number one, my number one, my number one palette, and I got this one as a skeptic, was very sure I was not going to like it, that it was just social media hype. Um, again, some type of contrarian streak. Like I can look at, th look at things objectively, but I do have a tendency of kind of like how much of it is, you know, there's my, my inner cynic is always ready for an opportunity and really popular things gives it an opportunity to like flex. So I got this one. It's pricey. It is not cheap. Expecting like, well, there's somebody down the drain. I didn't think it would be terrible, but I just was like, oh. And the first week that I used it, I kind of felt that way. But I don't know how much of that was my own bias and how much of that was um, just issues. But baby, when I tell you, when I want a look that is going to be blended, pigmented, when I want dimension, when, when I want to do a look and have no qualms with the shadows, right? When I want to, or not none, but just minimal. When I want something that I know, I know it can nail it. I reach for this one and I bought it this year. And it's a prime example of me getting past my initial opinion. Without further ado, the Carnival XL palette from Be Perfect. Like, I was, I was so sure this was just influencer hype that this really wasn't going to be that great. I was like, nothing's perfect. Absolutely nothing's perfect. And this isn't perfect either. But it absolutely deserves the praise that it gets. The formula of this palette. First of all, gorgeous. I think they did a great job laying it out. You kind of have your neutrals here, your cool tone neutrals, your taupey shades, your warm neutrals, your blue greens, your purple pinks, your red oranges, and you get these three highlighters. The mirror in here is very nice. I'm not, as you can see, I keep it in kind of clean, pristine condition. Um, I'm not someone who cares very much about a mirror in a palette. I just use a hand mirror or I actually have a vanity mirror that I use. But oh my God, this palette the pigmentation, incredible. Like this lime green in here, like you see how vibrant that is? That is the color you will get 
when you actually put it on your eye. It's not like, oh, it's, it's kind of bright. That neon effect, you will get this color when you put it on your eye. That's one of the things that I look for is, can I get the color in the pan? The answer is yes, you will get the color in the pan. Beautiful. What I also love about it is when you blend it out, it still manages to also still keep the pigment, right? So you get the blend, but still have the color come through. It's great when you're doing like looks that are graded or like where there's like a gradual shift in color. You see every individual line and it's so easy. They blend themselves out um, and they're very pigmented. The mistake I made with this black here, which is great. This black, oh, sorry, I'm telling you, all you need is one tap. One tap, maybe two, maybe two. If you do more than that, you just want to wear a black eye. You didn't want to smoke it. You didn't want to deepen. You just wanted to wear a black eye. I Part of why I hit pan on this one is I was going a little heavy. I did hit pan on these a little quickly, which is a little disappointing given that this retails, so I think for almost $60. I got this from Beauty Bay for $45. I don't know if it's still discounted to that. It wasn't a sale. It was just a discounted price, but absolutely phenomenal. The only issue I've run into, and it was part of why I didn't like it in the beginning, and it is an issue for a palette at this price point, is some of the shades in here do hard pan quite easily. So you will have to scrape like this shade. This yellow here is gorgeous. Sorry, that highlight got some of that yellow in it. It's gorgeous when it's not hard pan, but it hard pans all the time. So I have to scrape a little bit off the top, but when it's not hard panned, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And it's not all the shades, like the blues and greens in here, as someone who loves blues and greens, as I hope is indicated by, you know, the selections I chose from the Sugar Shop, the Rainbow Palettes, love blues and greens. Everything I could want in here, right? You get this really deep blue, you know, and again, my lighting is not giving a fair assessment. I wonder if I turn this one down a little bit, will it kind of give you more of a view of what I'm getting, just in terms of the the depth of this palette. I'm just turning that up a little more. But yeah, just absolutely phenomenal palette. Even the highlighters in here are nice. They're a little too warm for me. Now the shimmer formula in here is not bad. It's not, it's kind of these cream shadows that are basically shimmers. That said, I still prefer the Beauty Bay shimmers to these. These are not bad, they're not bad. Uh, Fortune is gorgeous. I really love Fortune, that yellow. But when I want to do a look and I, I know I want it to do what I need to do, I don't want any issues, I don't want to deal with patchiness, I want, if especially if it's a look that I know there's going to be a number of colors at play and I want each of those colors to be distinctive, this is the palette that I will reach for. I don't use her a ton only because of the price point. I don't want to have to replace it anytime soon, but it just... And again, I do run into the hard pan issues and that's what keeps it from being damn near perfect with this yellow, with this shade here, which I wish is a little deeper, this intuition shade. Um, but yeah, other than that, everything in this palette is great. Just great, it's a great palette. I absolutely would repurchase this palette. I wanna get the Love Tahiti, right? You know, I, yeah, I wanna get that at some point, but this palette, if you are on the fence about it, you're like, oh, I don't know if I wanna get the Carnival XL, oh, is it hype? As someone who is allergic to hype, as someone who runs from like just popularity, for them, it depends, it depends, but it's just as someone who is just averse to that, I can attest, this is the girl. So those are the eyeshadow palettes that I have for you. There are others that I could have shown, um, but those are the ones that I actually reached for with the Sugar Shop palettes. In 2020, I only had the Cotton Candy and the Cherry on Top. The others I ordered in 2020 in December, they just came yesterday, so they technically don't count, but I just want to show them off to you. But um, yeah, that's that kind of quick run through through the end because this is almost reaching an hour. If you stayed this long, oh my God. Oh my God, you know, thank you. The liners that I use, my go-to is the NYX Epic Ink Liner. And that's not what I use today. I've gone through two of them because I'm an idiot who keeps leaving the cap off and they dry out and I get annoyed. But my other one that I really like is from Wet n Wild. It's the Mega Liner. Very cheap, very black. I like how it goes on. Can't complain. When I want to play with color, I recently got these in December, 
but they've already become favorites. Where's the cap for that one? Um, the LA Girl Shockwave Neon Eyeliners. Love these. These work wonderfully. The only one that I kind of run into issues with is this purple one. I don't know where the cap is right now. And that's only because it's not super bright on my skin tone. But these other ones show up with no problem. The yellow, the teal, or the kind of cerulean blue, and then the green. Absolutely great. They show up well. Um, if some other liners, if you want some water-activated ones, these from Sheen Cosmetics, I've liked. Uh, this is the white one in buttermilk, and then this is the pink one here in bubblegum. I do like them. I do find that they are also UV liners, so they're really bright now, but out in the sunlight, like, you really see them glowing. So they do respond to UV light, um, and I enjoy them. I can't really complain. And lastly, I think I want to talk about is mascara. Now, as someone who has struggle lashes, and I mentioned earlier about lashes, I've been looking around for a mascara that assists with me with that struggle, right? That provides me aid. And for me, the mascara that has done it, I wanted to get the Thrive Mascara, but like $30 is an investment. That's quite an investment for me for, eye, for uh, mascara. I might've just shown it, you know, for those who know that is um, lesson, stop waving around. But the mascara that I've loved that is $5 and she gives me what I need is the Lash Princess. Again, people have talked about it. I'm sharing it as well. I like it. Um, it does definitely extend my lashes. This has a false lash effect, so I'm guessing it just put the fibers on and it really makes a difference. I'm able to wear this alone and have lashes that are, you know, discernible, which is great. Um, but I do have on lashes now because I caved into peer pressure. So, yes, isn't, isn't conformity gorgeous? So, I think that's everything. I've been talking for an hour. This is a hot mess. I know it's a hot mess um, that I can't guarantee will get better. <laughs> but I just want to put this out there. I hope you all enjoyed this. I will have links down below to other ways to just keep up with what I'm doing in terms of different looks. I post looks somewhat regularly on Instagram. I also share those on Facebook as well under Moot Aesthetic. That's how you pronounce it in case you were like, what the fuck is that? Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. I hope you enjoyed. I will have the in the description box what I used for this. I know I went over a couple things. Uh, the Book of Magic for the eyeshadow. Lipstick is from Juvia's Place in Dudu. Kills me. The pa Oh, I didn't mention this last thing. Last thing, Saharan Blush Palette. That's what I'm using now. This is my go-to. As, so as someone who is spitty, as someone who usually just uses a pink eyeshadow to do blush, this one got me. This is the Saharan Blush Palette. I only got it because it was on sale for $5 and consumerism was just whispering in my ear, bitch, get shit you don't need. I got you. So I purchased it. It was on sale for five bucks. I got this along with the Afrique and the Saharan palette. Um, this is so pigmented. I literally, this is what I use today. You dip in there once, you knock it off and you're gonna get pigmentation. I went twice with this one and I am giving you Ronald McDonald. To me, I think I'm giving you, you know, Clown College Dropout. I think I'm serving you, you know, dollar store doll that has been sitting there for a couple of years because nobody has wanted it and the manufacturer refuses to take it back. Well, you buy the merchandise, so why would they take it back anyway? Like they couldn't give it away for free because it scares people with how red it is. How can something be that red and not be, you know, whatever. Going <laughs> going off on a tangent. But yes, I definitely want to show that. Juvia's Place to Hair and Blush Palette has become one of my favorites. I was kind of hoping this deep shade was like a contour, but it's like a really deep burgundy. You could absolutely use this as an eyeshadow. This is the palette I was referencing with the highlighters that had a nice formula, but that I could not use because they were too warm. As you can kind of see, we don't mess with yellow highlighters over here. And yes, I believe that is everything. I have my socials down below. I can't sit here and pretend that I'm going to be consistently posting. My goal is to start consistently posting. I have some ideas of what I want to do with this channel. I do like makeup, but there may be other elements here 
just kind of art, photography, whatever other kind of pretentious bullshit I wish to share on the internet might be here. I also have Blue Avery stuff is the handle, but Blue Avery, that is my uh, singer, songwriter, musician side of things. So if you're interested in that, I will include that link down below. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for, you know, sticking around for an hour or even skipping ahead or like, leaving and going what did I just do with my life it's fine that you even like let your eyeballs grace upon me so thank you um, until next time